Matzinger. Yum. Today we're going to be integrating the function secant of x. And we're going to do this in two different methods. The first method we're going to use is the one that is traditionally taught in most calculus classrooms. The second method, I just discovered today. Never seen it before, and I think you're going to be interested in it. So please stick around. First method, what is traditionally done is taking secant of x and multiplying it by 1. Of course, multiplication by 1 does not change the value of the function. And so what we're going to have is a new integrand equivalent to the first that looks different. After all, that's the way we integrate any function, right? If we don't immediately know what the integral is, we change the way it looks, and hopefully it's in a new form that we are able to do something with. Well, the form of 1 that we're going to use to multiply secant of x by is a very clever choice. We're going to take secant of x plus tangent of x, and we're going to divide it by itself. Of course, dividing something by itself gives us 1, and so secant of x times this new factor is equivalent to our original secant of x. And whenever we multiply out, we get, uh, well, let's see, secant squared x plus secant x tangent of x as our new numerator. And of course, the denominator remains at secant of x plus tangent of x. Well, let's take a look at this new integral. What we, what we can notice is that the numerator is exactly equal to the derivative of the denominator. Well, check it out. Right, The derivative of secant of x is uh, secant x tangent of x. The derivative of tangent of x is secant squared x. And so what we have is a new integrand equivalent to the first, but an integrand of the form du over u, where u is secant of x plus tangent of x. Well, any time that we have an integral of the form du over u, the answer is always equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u, the natural log of the absolute value of the denominator. And so we wind up with a final answer of the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus tangent of x, and of course plus our constant of integration. Stick around. We're about to do the second method, which is a very, very unexpected method uses a very unexpected technique. Let's get rid of this board first. If you do like what you've seen so far, I hope that you'll uh, subscribe to the channel by hovering over the little subscribe button and, uh, and then clicking on subscribe. For our second method, of integrating secant of x, we're going to use substitution, traditionally called u substitution, but it's going to be a very unexpected choice of u. What we're going to do is we're going to let u equal, well, let's see, what could we pick on? Well, traditionally, we could pick, there's not a whole lot here, right? Secant of x is just about the only thing that uh, we could let u be traditionally. But in fact, it turns out that you can let u be anything at all and work forward and just see where it leads. What we're going to do is we're going to let u be, are you ready for this? Very unexpected. We're going to let u be sine of x. Where did that come from? Well, I didn't just pick it randomly. I picked it because I knew that whenever I took the derivative, I'm going to get something that's very closely associated with secant of x, right? Whenever I take the derivative of u, I'm going to get cosine of x dx, right? And of course, secant of x is the reciprocal of cosine, so it wasn't a completely random choice. I had a method. I had a, I had a reason for choosing it. Whenever I divide both sides by cosine of x to isolate dx, what I'm going to get is the dx is equal to, well, 1 over cosine of x times du, right? Well, secant of x is 1 over cosine of x, and so what I wind up with is, well, let's see, 
Secant of x dx is, well, 1 over cosine of x. That secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Times, well, and my dx is 1 over cosine x du. And so what I wind up with is writing secant of x dx as the integral of 1 over cosine squared x du. Now, I can't immediately evaluate this integral, right? Because now my, my uh, integration variable is u, but my integrand is in x. And so I have to try to figure out a way to re-express the integrand in a way that is in terms of u. Well, that actually is pretty straightforward because cosine squared of x is equal to, uh, well, it's equal to 1 minus sine squared of x. And sine of x is exactly what we had let u be. And so what I have now is I'm going to be integrating 1 over 1 minus u squared du. That's the new integral that we're going to be evaluating. Let's get on it right now. So we have now reduced the problem of finding the integral of secant x to the problem of finding the integral of 1 over 1 minus u squared du, where u is equal to sine x. And it turns out there's a very common technique to, uh, to use to solve this problem, and that is the method of partial fractions. That is, what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite 1 minus 1 minus u squared as the sum of uh, fractions which involve uh, factors of 1 minus u squared. Well, the factors of 1 minus u squared are 1 plus u and 1 minus u. And so what we're going to do is uh, set up two fractions, uh, one that involves the factor 1 plus u, as a denominator, and the other that involves 1 minus u as the denominator. And, uh, well, let's see, since both of our denominators are linear, we can, uh, we can use a numerator that is a degree less than that. Well, a degree less than linear, a degree less than degree 1 is degree 0, so constants. So there's going to be a constant a and a constant b that serve as our new numerators. Well, if I multiply both sides of this equation through by 1 plus u times 1 minus u, well, of course, on the left, I'm just going to get 1 because I'm multiplying by the entire denominator, so I'm going to get the numerator. And on the right, I'm going to get, uh, well, let's see, if I multiply 1 plus u times 1 minus u by a, the 1 plus u's are going to go away together. I'm going to be left with a times 1 minus u. And similarly, uh, whenever I multiply b over 1 minus u by this denominator, the 1 minus u's are going to go away together, right? 1 minus u over 1 minus u. And I'm going to be left with b times 1 plus u. So I need to, I need to uh, find values of a and b that are going to make this equation always true. And, well, let's think about this for just a moment. If I substitute a negative 1 in for u, right, I want this to be true for all values of u. So in particular, whenever u is negative 1, this term is going to go away because I'm going to have 1 plus negative 1. So this, is, this term is going to uh, contribute nothing to the sum. And over here, I'm going to have 1 minus negative 1. Well, 1 minus negative 1 is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So in this case, it's going to read 1 equals 2a. Well, that's going to make a equal one half. But similarly, if I had if I had used one as a value of u, then this term is going to go away, and I'm going to be left with two times b is equal to one, and so b is also going to be equal to a half. Well, that means that I can rewrite my integral one over one minus u squared du as, well, let's see, a and b are both one-half, 
So I'm going to factor the one half out, and I can bring it all the way outside the integral. And I'm going to be left then with, uh, well, let's see, it was going to be one half over one plus u factor the one half out. So I have one over one plus u. And similarly, one over one minus u for the, uh, for the second fraction. Both of these are easily evaluated. Both of these integrals are going to be natural log functions. The first one is simply the natural log of one plus u. And uh, the second one is going to be, well, let's see. If I use the natural log of 1 minus u, well, its derivative would have been 1 over 1 minus u times the derivative of 1 minus u, negative 1. So what I'm going to wind up with is uh, the natural log of 1 plus u minus the natural log of 1 minus u plus our constant of integration. And that's very nice because remember u is equal to, uh, u is equal to sine of x. And so substituting that back in and uh, taking advantage of properties of logarithms, what I have, let's see, this is going to be the natural log of, uh, well, let's see, the natural log uh, of an expression minus the natural log of another expression is going to be the natural log of the quotient of those expressions. So natural log of 1 plus u over 1 minus u. Again, u is equal to sine of x. So that's going to be the natural log of 1 plus sine of x over 1 minus sine x plus our constant of integration. And uh, we could stop there if we wanted to. We have, we, have successfully, we have successfully found a function that is equal to the integral of, uh, of uh, secant of x. Uh, I'd like to show that it's equal to the same integral that we or the same expression that we got whenever we evaluated it in method one. And we can do that uh, by, again, we're going to take advantage of properties of logarithms. Um, if I have a constant multiplied by a logarithm, I could rewrite that with the constant written as the exponent of the, uh, of the expression. And uh, so let's see, whenever I do that, and uh, I'm also going to, uh, I'm also going to, multiply top and bottom of, uh, of this fraction by 1 plus sine of x. Well, 1 minus sine of x times 1 plus sine of x is 1 minus sine squared of x. And of course, 1 plus sine of x times 1 plus sine of x is 1 plus sine of x quantity squared. This 1 half, well, I'm going to take the square root of the top and of the bottom. But the bottom, you'll notice, 1 minus sine squared x is just cosine squared of x. Common trigonometric identity. And so whenever I take the square root of the argument of the logarithm here, what I'm going to get is 1 plus sine of x over cosine of x. So I wind up with natural log of 1 plus sine of x over cosine of x, again, plus our constant of integration. But Check it out. 1 over cosine of x is secant x. Sine of x over cosine of x is tangent of x. And so our final answer is, in fact, the natural log of secant of x plus tangent of x. If you like this, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. Again, it's... Uh, the subscribe button is sitting down in the corner. Just hover over it, and, uh, and you'll be able to click subscribe. Look forward to seeing you in our next video.